Proof is a platform that to allow people to buy fractional ownership in assets. In particular, we're going to talk about housing because with the productivism project, we mainly are focused on how can we make it where people can buy, have ownership in real estate without making a lot of money. Um, my question is, again, this this is a great idea, right? Like well, being it, able it, to invest. It's not an idea; it's actually real. Oh yeah, 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 a great concept. Yeah, right? yeah right. like a natural. Um, but then again, like, why would someone? The, the only difference between this and a REIT is that this is in a specific property versus a REIT where they own many things. Mm -hmm. So why would someone want to do this versus a REIT? What's the like competitive advantage? So would a REIT, would would a REIT what's the minimum investment you need for a REIT? Uh, share, whatever the share price is. So like what's 25 bucks. 25 bucks. In this situation, why can't someone just buy a, a REIT. So this is the beauty of proof. So say it's, uh, you have the homeowner and our homeowner is in the UK. Now our homeowner wants to look, wants to get some liquidity out of their property without going through a traditional bank uh, or they, they don't want to give up all complete ownership of their property. So they decide to give up 25% uh, of their property. So they're looking for other kind of sort of investors in their in their own property, so they're they're thinking of going into business on a residential scale. No, it can be residential property or it can be commercial oh, property. Okay, okay. So what it is, it gives the individual huh. who's the owner the ability to take part of their property and put it on the proof platform mm. to get liquidity out of their property. Uh. With the REITs, normally, how do they get their properties? You have a the big corporation, yeah, corporation and, and, that, and that's the thing. Big corporations, not everyone can have that that same as access like big corporations. So proof try to make it where the smaller person, someone that works at, so usually you get a homeowner, twenty five percent. Now you have a person that makes five dollars an hour, who doesn't have much money. They probably don't have twenty five bucks to invest in a REIT, but they can take five or six dollars of their money and buy a fraction of that twenty five percent. And now they have mm. part ownership in a property. Our main focus was millennials. Because mm. millennials aren't investing at the same rate as our parents were back in the day. Whatever. Because back then, you know, it was the thing to do. Hey, work, work a nine to five job, you know, get your retirement and whatnot. Millennials aren't really, think, don't really invest that way. So with our platform, we're trying to make it where it's easy for millennials who's making five bucks an hour to be able to invest in part of real estate we even have commercial papers on there, or if someone has like a company that we clear to put on the marketplace, they can buy per, uh, like ownership in that company as well and get paid out dividends through the platform. So we're trying to make it where it's an uh, easy, frictionless process for millennials to invest and build wealth slowly. Using One blockchain. Yeah, yeah, that's the underlying technology with it, but at the same time, we're just trying to make it where is easy accessible for anyone to be able to. You're kind of limited to just that one property. What if you don't like that property? I mean, because then it, it, on the marketplace, you can then trade it. You can exchange it to someone else who wants okay. to buy it. So then you can put your token, you can put your ownership in the property on a marketplace with someone else who wants to buy it. Okay. Just like an exchange. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and currently, how many properties are? Like I said, right now we this? have four on the platform and we're working to get more put on there and it was because it was still in beta but it is live so okay. people can go in there and purchase part fractions of property that is on there so it's real actual assets we do have on the platform okay and are there like profiles of the of these assets yep so you go on there you'll see like a picture of the property gives you information about what the owner of the property is willing to give in exchange for you purchasing like a unit in their mm -hmm. property and all that. Mm -hmm. Same with the commercial papers we had on the platform as well. Okay. So once the commercial paper matures, it pays out dividends to everyone who was holding the, the token that they purchased of that asset. Okay, and um, these units that they, they purchase, are the units that these people buy shares of, is it owned by the person living there or is the owner someone else that's who's renting it out 
Mostly we're dealing with like rental properties. Okay. Because it, it, it occurs it generates income. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That can potentially be paid out to those who bought their fraction ownership in that okay. property. So But it depends on what the owner of the property wants to do. The owner would say, Hey yeah. look, it's a rental property. I, I it does generate income, but Instead of me paying you part of that rental property, they could, the income, they could say, well, when I sell the property, you will get paid out at that Whatever. point. So yeah. it just depends on what they want to do on that. Now, some people might say, well, you know what, I'll, we'll also give you 25% of the rental income as well when okay. you purchase that. It just depends on what the owner of the property want, is willing to give up yeah. okay. in exchange. And so how is it priced? Like, how are the shares priced? In terms of like, so example, he, the person says, oh, I want to, I want to sell 25%. Mm -hmm. Is it based off of market value? Um, or, that one, I'll have to get with Ty and Mike and get the exact on how they set up the price for those part. Because that's the part I don't deal with that part. Okay. But I just know how it works and whatnot. The pricing part, because they deal one-on-one. -on -one, so like if you have a property, they have to set up a Skype call with you and talk uh, about it okay. and go, go from there. Okay. Ideally, like we said, we wanted to make it where millennials have a means to become the build wealth, mm -hmm. um, even potential build a portfolio of fractions of other real estates and assets, mm -hmm. not in a traditional way that, you know, the 401ks and our pension plans, our parents, because like most millennials work in gigs and gigs don't come with benefits packages. Yeah. Our, our yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah so back. with the proof platform, that could be a solution for that. Hey, yeah. You, Take five dollars out of your check and purchase something on the platform that can appreciate in value. And if you need to get quick liquidity, you can sell it off so you can get the money because you need to pay for something like emergency, or whatever. It's easy. It's not as you don't need to input like your social security number like some of the other like traditional investment platforms. That's one thing that we like to talk about is is the e the on ramp is a lot more easy, mm -hmm. less because you know what the traditional was to know your customer type. Regulations they had to go through. You got to, some people want to see your photo ID, your birth certificate. <laughs> they know they want to see everything to prove that you're the person. Yeah. And that's due to money laundering because right now the governments are trying to combat money laundering, people moving capital out their country like China or whatnot. But um, with the with in with this type of platform and other blockchain related fintech companies, they're trying to put out their positive image that hey look we're not trying to do nothing shady or illegal here. We're just trying to help people build wealth and get liquidity and assets that they have in a much more effective way. It's like you're a small town or whatever and you're a small town and you want to put a bond out there so you can raise capital for the town. Um, you can use the proof platform to put the bond on there and you can tell your, your, your citizens of the town, hey look, we're trying to raise money for to fund the building of a new school. Purchase our bond, the citizens. Like you can purchase our bond on the proof platform, and and the citizens like, all right, cool, yeah, I, I want to see this new school because I live here. I want my child to go there. So there's an invested interest in it, and now the town and the people, the people can now know for sure. Hey, we keep the town accountable for. Hey, look, we bought this bond, and it keeps on a small scale. Yeah, so, you know, you don't need to have the like, all the big stuff type of. The but big, then my question is, is that. Do people have enough ownership for them, for it to be compelling enough for them to want to have that much of a, put that much of an effort or interest in it? I mean, because if someone's got like one or two percent share or uh, uh, or that are vested in, into something, mm -hmm. are they really gonna care about it as someone who's got much more? It depends. Like, if you think about it, if you coming from a third world country. One or two percent might mean a lot when you don't have shit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, like yeah. you go, and, and I. So like, I understand your point of view. I like to sometimes take myself out of the the first world country point of view. Yeah, because yeah, for yeah. us, oh, we're, yeah, we're, you I know, agree. I agree. Yeah. But from someone who has nothing, mm. that one percent is everything. Because that probably could have been one percent that they spent on an asset. They could have fed their family for an mm. extra week. You know what I'm saying? So you know, thinking back to the old school days when immigrants came to America, they had nothing. They had a they had a scrape and scrunch. Yeah, yeah. This is a, is pretty much like a technology version of it. Yeah, hey, you is, don't have a lot of money, but you can start off with a dollar, yeah, two dollars, three dollars. This, this is good because it, it opens up the markets yep. to all more liquidity. Sorts of, yeah, all, mm -hmm. all sorts of uh, individuals.